This mini tutorial is going to be kind of a part three to two other videos that I, that we did on keyframing. Ways that you can change effects over time or change position or, or do other fun things. So this one, we've got a uh, very colorful, very becandified gingerbread house that we're, we're working on. Uh, it's It has a lot going on deliberately, <laughs> but we're, I wanted to add some some lights and some movement to this and it's not done yet we'll kind of play with it a little bit I, I can show you some of the the simple animations and, and lights that we're adding and show you how to do it in after effects using keyframings and and keyframing and then we're going to introduce expressions too and that can sound a little scary on the surface but um, i'll show you how to do it and it's not too hard so here's a quick sample we've got these m m's up here blinking like christmas lights got Candy's rocking back and forth, Tin Man's rocking, and then the mints are, are spinning. So let's show you how to do that. For the Tin Man, well, I got to find the Tin Man first because I have not named these very good. I just kept the name from when I found them. So here we go, Nutcracker. That has a good name. Let's zoom in on the Nutcracker here. So I wanted him to rock back and forth and so a couple things i had to do to make sure that it was going to work properly um, is and something that we covered in the previous video the first thing i had to do is make sure that the anchor point was where i, I wanted it if i wanted him to to tilt back and forth but i wanted the the pivot point to be down near his feet and so i had to adjust that the anchor point with this setting right here to make sure that it was at his feet so that when when it's playing the video he rocks back and forth on that pivot point i'm going to keep this on half since it's being slow um so so that part we, we kind of covered in in a previous video how you can change a, an anchor point and then i did keyframing on orientation so on the first dot here, first keyframe, I had him tilted to the left, went forward on the timeline a little, had him tilting to the right. All that we covered in the other one. Now here's, here's the new part though. I didn't wanna keep doing keyframes, a bunch of dots throughout my entire show. I just wanted it to repeat. And so what you can do is after you've set those two first frames, you can hold down the Alt key on Windows and click on, this, on the stopwatch. And that brings up an expression window. There's tons and tons of these you can do, but the one that I'm using here, and, and you'll notice as I start typing, it gives you the prompt so you don't have to remember exactly what it is. But the one I'm going to use here is a, a loop out function. And for a couple parameters, well, it really just needs one parameter in this case. I'm going to do double quotes. And again, it gives me a, a prompt of different things you can play with. I'm going to use the ping pong one. This way, it will keep going back and forth without having to add additional keyframes throughout the whole show. Pretty cool, huh? So that same concept I've done, I did for the, the Tin Man. Uh, I did that with this candy up here to make it kind of rock back and forth being a little slow on the, the rendering. Let me drop that down even more. I've got a lot of stuff going on in this and my computer's not that great. So I did the same thing though to, with that candy to rock back and forth with the anchor point in the middle. Um, for the, the peppermints spinning, let me find those in my project. I'm gonna organize this a little bit better too after the fact. Here's my mint. And on this one, I wanted it to, to rotate and spin. So the keyframing is on the rotation attribute. And this one, I didn't have to actually do any keyframes per se. I was able to just press Alt and click the stopwatch. And then for this expression, I just typed time asterisk 100 or time times 100. And that will rotate it by this many degrees. And you can you can mess with the with the settings to get the pace that you want. 
but it's going to just continuously rotate now with just a simple expression like time asterisk 100. Cool, right? So that way with anchor points and keyframes, you could, you could do all sorts of fun movement. Uh, the, the last thing to show you is the M&Ms up here. So the M&Ms blink on and off like Christmas lights. And I did this with a couple different steps. The first one was just a normal M&M layer. So if I turn off, I made two copies of the M&Ms. And in the first one, I, I didn't really do much. I think I do have a drop shadow effect. Yeah, I have a drop shadow on it just so it pops a little bit. But I didn't do anything with it, really. This is just kind of a the untransformed base M&Ms. I made a copy of the M&Ms. And this one, I added a glow effect, which we've also covered in another video. So that makes it, let's put that on a little. And you can see how it makes it glow. It's got a light inside of it. And the glow by itself is cool, but I wanted it to, to flash on and off. So in addition to the glow, I use that same ping pong function that I showed you for tilting the tin man back and forth. Uh, but this time I used it on the opacity. And so what will happen is ping ponging back and forth periodically, it's going to, to decrease the opacity and fade out the M&Ms that have the glow effect. And so that would leave the, the underlying base M&Ms visible. And then it'll pong back and, and raise the opacity and fade in the M&Ms that have the glow effect on it. Hopefully that made sense. But the net result of that is got that top layer that's flashing and the, the base layer underneath it. So you get flashing M&Ms. So hopefully that gives you some, some other ideas to play with. There's a lot of cool things you can do with just these simple uh, principles and simple expressions.